use enormous resources, specialized equipment over vast areas of land, and it's all for have a lot in common. We eat food. And there are a lot of us. We eat a lot of food. Enough to fill buildings like these. Now, it wouldn't be possible for all of us to eat if we didn't raise our food on farms. Tons of it. This is wheat. It'll be turned into pastry and pasta. You know, uh, spaghetti and donuts. Now, every grain Almost every bit of the food almost any of us ever eats is grown and gathered on a farm. This is the farm. So we grow nothing but food! It's science! Take a look at this. It's our very large human food land area of science. Now, ancient people used to roam vast areas of land, perhaps 25 square kilometers, to find enough food to eat for a year. An ancient person, uh, like this one, might have been a hunter-gatherer scavenger, hunted small animals, gathered fruits and vegetables, and scavenged for food that other animals left behind. But over thousands of years, Humans figured out how to turn land like this into land like this. It's a farm. They're crops, plants that have been planted in regular patterns to take best advantage of the nutrients in the soil and the amount of water that's available. On this farm, they're even raising some crops just to feed animals. Now, the animals and the crops are both used by humans for food. Now, a couple of centuries ago, it took an area of land about 400 meters by 400 meters in North America to feed a family, about 40 acres. But now, around the turn of the 21st century, we're able to feed a person using modern farms with an area of land that's just 50 meters by 50 meters. We've gone from 25 square kilometers to half a soccer field. See, farming is a science. Humans have figured out better and more efficient ways to farm. supermarket? I don't think so. Try the farm, animal. Food comes from farms. Food comes from farms. You heard me. Food comes from farms. This is a pineapple plantation, a place where people plant and pick pineapples. Wood, yummy, yummy. Now, pineapple plants are prickly, so pineapple pickers take precaution. They wear protection. Now, you may ask, how does a pineapple picker pick a pineapple? Well, a pineapple picker picks a pineapple with a push. Then you give the top a twist. This part of the pineapple is the peduncle. This cap is the crown. So how does a pineapple planter plant pineapples? Well, you pierce the plastic and you make a cup in the crust for the crown with this kooky contraption. So you may ask, how many pineapples could a pineapple picker pick in a period of time? Fifteen. Well, uh, uh, oh, we're just going to have to address that later. That particular question. I don't know any more 
words that begin with P. Platypus, paper cut, pet rock. I just love corn on the cob. You, you ever seen them cartoons where they eat corn on the cob? It's like it's a typewriter. Ting! Well, of course, when you eat real corn on the cob, it doesn't get that little bell noise or nothing, but, you know, it's still fun. And it's good. It's really good. As we all know, weather is very important to farming. And farming, as we all know, is science! Hmm, it's good. Let's see, wheat, corn, sugar, <laughs> along with a whole bunch of other ingredients. You know, I got this box at the store, but that's not where the cereal comes from. This grain was just gathered from a wheat field. First, it goes down. And it shoots along the ground, underground, that's up there, high above into those silos. They're called elevators because the grain's got to get elevated to get in. The sugar came from here. It's growing on an island in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. It gets mixed with grain from the middle of North America. Wild. It's packed into bite-sized cereal shapes and shipped to you and you and you and you and you. All these ingredients are raised on farms. They're harvested and then put together. Where does food come from? The shopping center. Where does the shopping center get it? I don't know. Does it come from farms? Yeah, I guess so. You don't have to live on a farm to be a farmer. Just try this. Uh... Fold a paper towel and get it wet. Then put your paper towel in a plastic bag with a seed, like a lima bean. Now put that in your pocket. And in a couple of days, your seed's gonna sprout. Try it a lot of different times with different seeds in different pockets. But you're gonna wanna be careful because you don't want things to get too out of control. When you grow food on land, you have to eat dirt. Please consider the following. You might not have thought about it, but everything that lives on a farm depends on plants. And plants live in dirt. It has to be good dirt. Rich topsoil like this is full of living things. Bugs, worms, roots, dead leaves. It's all part of what we in the soil business call organic material. Organic matter is the remains of plants and animals. Organic material is stuff that came from organisms. Organic organisms, you with me? <coughs> now, topsoil like this is perhaps 10% uh, organic material. The rest is sand and rocks. Now, the kinds of nutrients that plants take up through their roots comes from the organic material. Without that 5, 10, or 20 percent of organic material like this, hardly anything would grow here. So the plants need the topsoil to grow. It takes centuries for topsoil to form. That's because it takes a long time for living things to gnaw away at dead things and turn them into the kind of nutrients that plants can use. Whenever we eat plants that are grown in soil, in a way, we're eating dirt. Thank you for joining me on Confirm the Fallen. Bill, you're not gonna... Oh, Bill. In each acre of this farmland, there may be as many as 50,000 earthworms. They are constantly loosening hard soil by eating their way through it, opening the soil to air and water necessary for the growth of plants. The earth eaten by earthworms is deposited in small mounds called castings around the openings of their burrows. The castings, a form of manure, help to fertilize the soil. I'm Ray DeVries. I'm an organic farmer. Some of the foods that we grow here, there's leek and there's carrots and there's zucchinis and these are flying saucers. Nah, just kidding. Organic farming means that we don't use herbicides and we don't use pesticides. And not only that, we have really happy worms. And our fertilizer, it comes natural. This is an important step in organic farming because we're taking the manure that came from those cows and we're spreading it out on the field. And this is putting a lot of nitrogen and other beneficial nutrients right into our soil again. This is our compost pile. This is manure, straw, hay, all the stuff cows don't eat. And it makes fantastic 
fertilizer for soil. Here we have kale, and what our kale has is aphids. Aphids are bugs that really like living on kale. The thing is, we don't like aphids on our food, so what we spray with is soap and vegetable oil mixed with water. The soap kills the bug, and the vegetable oil makes the soap stick to the bug. It only kills the aphids, the bad bugs, and it allows the good bugs to keep right on living. And because it's just soap and oil, it doesn't hurt us either. This is what organic farming is all about. From healthy soil, we get healthy food. Not all farms are on land. This is an oyster farm. Instead of raising cattle or wheat, we're raising oysters. Oysters grow from larvae, baby oysters. They're about this big. The larvae swim around and they attach themselves to something. What they like to attach themselves to is another oyster shell. So here's what we do. We humans come along and we get a clean oyster shell stuck in these long line ropes. The larvae stick to that oyster shell and look, they grow, they bloom just like flowers. They get all the nutrients they need and their oxygen right out of the water as the tide comes in and out every day. Now see, there's a lot more oysters growing here on these long lines than there would be naturally. Humans are farming oysters. They're growing food. And these are mighty good eating. Hey, Pa. Yeah, Ma. Did you know that farming changes the environment? How so, Ma? Well, just think about all the water it takes to raise a single field of hay. OK. Ma, well, thank you. Crops are plants. They need three things to grow. Carbon dioxide from the air, light from the sun, and water. Water is the key. If crops aren't getting enough water from rain, farmers will find ways to bring water to the crops. It's called irrigation. Irrigation can change dry land into fertile farmland. To get the millions of liters of water that we need to irrigate crops, we go to all kinds of trouble. We build huge dams, giant reservoirs, or drill very deep wells. Irrigation is a big part of farming. Farming changes the environment. a headlock and it catches their heads so they don't move around when you give them a shot and it doesn't hurt them at all. Part of farming cattle is preventing diseases with shots. This is uh, soft white wheat. It'll be shipped to the Orient to be made into noodles. These are peas right here. We grow peas on the farm with corn and a whole bunch of other crops. After we harvest these, send them to the uh, cannery where they can them, and then they freeze them and put them in the supermarket. After we <laughs> harvest the peas, there's the vines from the peas and the pea pods, and then we rake it up and make hay out of it to feed the cows. This is an ear of corn that will be ready in about two weeks, and we have to hand pick this out of our little patch. This is what my sister calls a little patch. We've got to pick a hundred dozen every day. Did you ever wonder where butter comes from? Uh, cow's milk? Brilliant, Einstein. See, cows make milk and cream. And from cream, we get butter. Oh, yeah, I know And that. you can make butter right at home, too. Just take some whipping cream, and you pour it in a jar like this. And then, you start shaking it. Shaking. Since you get really tired, you might want to have someone help you. Butter. We have butter! Yeah! Cool, see, after about 20 minutes, the fat in the cream forms into grainy blobs. And when the blobs stick together, you got butter. 
Then pour out the liquid on the top. But that's better milk. And the stuff left in the bottom, that's your butter. Mm -hmm. It's cool. I made butter. This is winter rye, like rye bread. But no one's going to ever eat this crop. The farmer planted it to hold the soil through the winter time. In the spring, the farmer will plow it into the ground to make organic material for the next crop. See, it's just one more way that farmers have figured out how to grow more food on their land. There's all kinds of people involved. There's botanists, agronomists, geneticists, entomologists, farmers, all working together to manage the soil, the amount of water, and to plant the right kind of crops so we can grow food efficiently. See, farming is science. Hey, Pa. Yeah, Ma. Guess what time it is? What time is it, Ma? It's harvest time. And now here's Bill Nye. You know the old saying, lab coats don't grow on trees. That's right. They grow in fields. This is a cotton field. And these are cotton plants. See, it's a farm where we're not raising food, we're raising clothes. It's time for Mind Your Manners with Billy Kwan. Today's episode, Harvest of Fury. At last, I have grown the perfect tomato on my uh, urban farm. Hey, who put these dirt clods over here in my garden? Get these out of here. Oh, it is huh. so plump and succulent and perfect and... Oh, oh, get this out. Oh, my God. Oh! Ha! You have destroyed my masterpiece! Huh? Your careless clod throwing has turned my beautiful tomato into ketchup! Oh, you want to see some farming, huh? Well, hey, check this out. Ha! Oh, she is very good yeah. with a farm implement. Oh, yeah. Yeah. to the country gonna eat a lot of farm food I'm moving to the country gonna eat me a lot of farm food I'm moving to the country gonna eat a lot of farm food I'm moving to the country gonna eat a lot of farm food this farm food's grown with a plan raised and planted by humans riding tractor is around and no matter where I might stay I'll eat farm food every day. Get it down at the grocery. Move into the country. Gonna raise a lot of farm food. Move into the country. Gonna raise a lot of farm food. Get ready for a mulching. Implement this. Bushels of farm food, farm food for me. Acres of farm food, farm food you see. Truckloads of farm food, farm food for me. Millions of farm foods, farm foods you see. Oh, look Boys and girls, be a good tomato, or I will weed you out. Well, that's our show. Thanks for watching. If you'll excuse me, I've got some vascular nitrogen levels to monitor. See ya. Produced in association with the National Science Foundation. Where are you going, Bill? Bill! Don't leave me here alone, Bill. I can hear you, Bill. Are you stalking me, Bill? Come on, Bill, this is corny. Bill! Hey, Ma. Yeah, Paul. Did you know that farmers control all their plants, animals, and soil to grow and raise food? Did I ever? Do I ever? I... <laughs> Whoa. OK, he's so milking him. Speed. Just Here one more. Here we go. Here we go. How many pineapples could a pineapple pick in a period of time? Oh, boy. <laughs> Me? I was fighting it. It was a, a fly literally up my nose. I'm okay. See that? It's a carpet of food. And it wouldn't be there if it weren't for humans. We change the environment. 
use enormous resources, specialized equipment over vast areas of land, and it's all for and I have a lot in common. We eat food. And there are a lot of us. We eat a lot of food. Enough to fill buildings like these. Now, it wouldn't be possible for all of us to eat if we didn't raise our food on farms. Tons of it. This is wheat. It'll be turned into pastry and pasta. You know, uh, spaghetti and donuts. Now, every grain Almost every bit of the food almost any of us ever eats is grown and gathered on a farm. This is the farm. Humans have figured out ways to change the environment so we grow nothing but food! It's science! Take a look at this. It's our very large human food land area of science. Now, ancient people used to roam vast areas of land, perhaps 25 square kilometers, to find enough food to eat for a year. An ancient person, uh, like this one, might have been a hunter-gatherer scavenger. Hunted small animals, gathered fruits and vegetables, and scavenged for food that other animals left behind. But over thousands of years, humans figured out how to turn land like this into land like this. It's a farm. They're crops, plants that have been planted in regular patterns to take best advantage of the nutrients in the soil and the amount of water that's available. On this farm, they're even raising some crops just to feed animals. Now, the animals and the crops are both used by humans for food. Now, a couple of centuries ago, it took an area of land about 400 meters by 400 meters in North America to feed a family, about 40 acres. But now, around the turn of the 21st century, we're able to feed a person using modern farms with an area of land that's just 50 meters by 50 meters. We've gone from 25 square kilometers to half a soccer field. See, farming is a science. Humans have figured out better and more efficient ways to farm. supermarket? I don't think so! Try to farm, animal! Food comes from farms! Food comes from farms! You heard me! Food comes from farms! This is a pineapple plantation, a place where people plant and pick pineapples. Good, yummy, yummy. Now, pineapple plants are prickly, so pineapple pickers take precautions. They wear protection. Now, you may ask, how does a pineapple picker pick a pineapple? Well, a pineapple picker picks a pineapple with a push. Then you give the top a twist. This part of the pineapple is the peduncle. This cap is the crown. So how does a pineapple planter plant pineapples? Well, you pierce the plastic and you make a cup in the crust for the crown with this kooky contraption. So you may ask, how many pineapples could a pineapple picker pick in a period of time? Fifteen. Well, uh, uh, oh, we're just going to have to address that later. That particular question. I don't know any more 
words that begin with P. Platypus, paper cut, pet rock. I just love corn on the cob. <laughs> you ever seen them cartoons where they eat corn on the cob? It's like it's a typewriter. Well, of course, when you eat real corn on the cob, it doesn't get that little bell noise or nothing, but, you know, it's still fun, and it's good. It's really good. As we all know, weather is very important to farming. And farming, as we all know, is science! Mmm, it's good. Let's see, wheat, corn, sugar, <laughs> along with a whole bunch of other ingredients. You know, I got this box at the store, but that's not where the cereal comes from. This grain was just gathered from a wheat field. Earth, it goes down. And it shoots along the ground, underground, 